Thanks for joining us at Meeting Place Online. I'm Isaac, Creative Director here at Meeting Place Church, and I'm so glad that y'all could join us. We are in the last sermon in our series, Alive, where we're learning about what it means to be alive in Christ and live fully for Him. And what better way to do that than through baptism? This is our Baptism Sunday. After the service, you get to actually see highlights of our kids and adults being baptized, and what an amazing time that it was. If you'd like to partner with our ministry and make things like this happen every single week, you can do that at meetingplace.cc slash give. Now sit back and get ready to hear a word from God. Uh, if you have your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 11. We're going to start reading at verse 28, 11 and 28. If you don't have a Bible, it'll be on the screen. We've been in a series that we started Three weeks ago, it's called Alive. If you see everybody wearing the shirts and the whole point of being alive and the, the basis of the series is built on we were once dead, but Christ made us alive. Amen? Amen? The Bible says we crossed over from death to life. We were dead in our sins, but God made us alive. The word dead in our sins, is, is, uh, is, is almost like saying we were zombies. Walking around with no purpose, no, no reason, just walking. You know, and my impression of a zombie is like this. Uh, that's what we're doing. Uh. And, and that's what we were. We were zombies with no plan, no purpose. But God came and said, no, I don't want you to live your life without a calling, without a plan, without a purpose. Because I formed, before I formed you, I had a plan and purpose in mind for you. I already had a dream out for you, and I already had a place. And so here's what I'm doing. I'm offering you an opportunity to step into your call, into your purpose. Amen? Amen. And so how many of you know, because God has done this work for us, that we are alive? The Bible says we are alive. No longer dead in our sins. No longer a captive of the enemy. We are now alive. So that's what we've been talking about the last three weeks. And today I wanted to end just by preaching a message I want to call Rest in Peace. Whoa. Somebody say rest in peace. Rest in peace. Say it loud. Rest in, rest in peace. Matthew 28, 11, 28 says, Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Then we're going to switch over to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, which says, Therefore, if anyone, somebody say anyone. anyone. Who is anyone? anyone? If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. One translation said he's a new creature. The old has passed away. I'm glad that my old is gone. Amen. Because <laughs> my old was no joke. <laughs> Me and you, okay? It wasn't no joke. Um, behold, the new has come. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to say today. I pray that you use me to speak a word that pierces the heart of your people. God, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, uh, let, let's just be honest. We, we as people like to work. We like to work. I, I'm not saying that you like to go to your job and work 40 hours a week. But you don't like to sit around and just be chilling all the time. Mm -hmm. Correct? Amen. You got to do something. I, and you, you know, you stay in the house too long, you start going, I got to get out of this house because I'm losing my mind. I'm about to snap on somebody up in here because I've been here way too long and everybody looking the same and I got to get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like We like to work. We like to be actively doing something. Amen? Amen? And it's just innate in us. You know, because it's Mother's Day, I want to focus a little bit on the mothers because the mothers work a lot. A lot. And all the men said, listen, if you are a man, you... Don't even have a clue what it feels like to be working. <laughs> I know you work your job, but uh, moms don't get a break. And, and because we are people who like to work, we take on labor and we labor, we label labor as being alive. The more I work, the more I'm alive. The more I'm doing, the happier I am. If I'm out the house and the sun is out and I'm playing in the park, I feel good about myself. 
If I got money coming in and everything's going good, I'm feeling good about myself. But the moment we get in a struggle or the moment we get the, uh, the feeling blue and down, we, we're like, uh, we start questioning stuff. Well, maybe I'm not doing enough. Maybe I'm not working hard enough. Maybe I'm not going after this hard enough. And it seems like it, I'm, I'm failure after failure. And it seems like even though I'm trying, nothing's working out. And I just don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just not cut out for this. Amen? But how many of you know that you are alive not because of how hard you work, but because of what Christ has done? No matter how hard you work to be good, you can never be good enough to accomplish what Christ did on the cross. You will never be good enough to even, uh, to even step up to the line and say, Lord, I am perfect. No, we're none, of, none of us are perfect. That's why we needed Jesus Christ. The fact is Christ came and died for us because we couldn't die for ourselves. He paid a price. His blood was pure because our blood was not pure. Amen? I feel like preaching my soul today. Y'all know I might get on. I might start humming a little bit today. No, y'all want me to hum. I'll hum out of key. It'll be all messed up. <laughs> Listen, no matter how hard you work, you'll never be good enough to accomplish what Christ can only accomplish. And sometimes as people, we get in our work ethics and we think God is pleased with our acts. But God is not pleased with how much we do versus who we are. And who you are is developed on the inside. I'm alive because things work inside. Think about it. If my heart stops, guess what you would call me? A dead man. But this is how we do. So anyways, I'm not going to labor. You know, the fact is I want to set up just the understanding that we like to work. I mean, we like to work. I like to work. I'll stay up 2 o'clock in the morning working if I have to. Because I think I, I, the more I accomplish, the better I am. But how many of you know Christ did something that we couldn't do? And no matter how hard we work, we cannot accomplish that. So as I was looking at the scripture, I got to thinking. I said, you know, there's a couple of things that we need to understand. And, and we, I call it rest in peace because we need, we need peace. Because torment, you know, work brings torment. I mean, let's be honest. It's always a constant battle. A battle. I'm not good enough. I don't do enough. I don't. Ah, oh, this kid's getting on my nerves. Yeah. All the moms like, boy, you come home. Can you scream at my kids like that? Uh, <laughs> but we need to understand Christ has done something for us. So the first thought I had was this, this right here, working myself to death, working myself to death. He said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Listen, every man, the Bible says every man has an appointed time to which he will stand at judgment. All right? We all believe we're gonna die someday, right? Uh, that sounds a little more of it, but let's just let's let's talk about it. We all believe we're gonna die, right? Everybody believe that? Anybody believe they're gonna live forever? Because if you do, uh, I need to talk to you at the church. So at some point, we all gotta stand before the Lord in judgment. And what do you want to do when you stand in front of the Lord in judgment? Do you want to stand in front of Him and say, "Look at all these things I did." Look at what I accomplished. Look at how good I was. How many of you know that argument won't hold up in front of the Lord? He's not interested in what you do. Because who you are needs to line up with what you do. And if you don't have who you are in check and you can do all these good things, all the stuff that you want to do, and you can call it good all day long, if you're not right in your soul... God ain't going to answer. He ain't going to honor your sacrifice. I mean, works can look like Cain and Abel. Cain 
brought the best. Man, did you not see what I got? I got the best of it. Abel was like, uh, here you go. <laughs> but this, the level of sacrifice was not judged on how good it looked versus on where it came from. The heart. Amen? Amen? Well, why do you say working myself to death? Because here's the thing. We're all on the pathway to death. That's just it. We're going to die. I hate, I hate to break that out to you on Mother's Day, and I know you're probably going to be sad at the church. Man, I'm going to die. You're going to die. But do you want to work yourself to death? I don't want to work and then die and go to hell. I don't want to do all these things that are good and right. And righteous, and, I, and I'm boastful and prideful because I get all this stuff right, and I don't smoke, and I don't drink, and I don't do all these things that people who are unsaved, they do all this stuff. I don't do all that. I'm good, but never have my soul right. I don't want to live my life doing all these acts and never getting the inside correct. And Jesus says, hey, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. And labor here is working hard. All you who work hard, all you who put all this effort behind trying to live your best life, come to me. I want to do something for you that you can't do for yourself. I want to give you rest. I want to give you the ability to not even have to work so hard because I've done the work for you. I want to do something for you that you can't do for yourself. I want to save you. Come to me. If, you, if you're laboring, if you feel heavy, if you're feeling down, if you feel like you, you can't get ahead, come to me. He, you know, the word labor here is also in relation to childbirth. Now, I ain't never birthed a child. Okay? I watched my two be born. And I'm going to tell you something. I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but you didn't give this to me because we would not have any kids in the earth. I'd be like, nope. Tubes tied, everything tied. Walk around. Don't you touch me. <laughs> because child, childbirth is painful. I thought my women would be like, It, it, it's no joke. Like, you got to be ready. You got to mentally be strong to handle what's about to happen. Because your body starts changing. And everything starts changing. And everything, emotions. And you're like, ah. Oh. Wake up one day. I don't like you. But I love you this afternoon. Everything's changing. You have no clue. And the work starts the moment a woman gets pregnant. The work starts. And then labor, what they call labor is that last very intense few moments where she has to push to get what's in her out. Listen, Jesus is saying, I don't want you to have to work so hard to get what's in you out. I don't want you to have to work so hard to get the dream in your life out. I don't want you to have to work so hard. Listen, if you come to me, I'll give you rest and I'll take care of it. Amen? Amen. Don't work yourself to death. That's good. That's good. I'm working myself to death. My next thought was this. Resting is living. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Resting is living. I, th the more you work proves nothing to me about how you live your life. It tells me you're a hard worker. I'm interested to see how you rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Doctors have said, doc, even doctors say, the, the most important part of life is resting. Think about it. Doctors even say the most important thing you can do in life is sleep. You need at least eight hours of sleep. Everybody looking at me like, eight hours? I didn't even know that existed. Amen. On average, I get about four to six, maybe. <laughs> Today, I'm running on about three and a half. All right? 
But doctors, even doctors have come together and said, to, to, to really be living, you need to have your resting under control. So it makes me think, the process of living depends on how well you rest. Amen? Amen. Well, you can work all day long, but have you ever taken a rest? Have you ever given your weary soul to the Lord? Have you ever said, Lord, it's not in my hands, it's in your hands? I'm going to step back and let you handle this. I got, I got faith. I say I have faith in you. I'm just going to put my faith in you. I'm going, I'm going to let you do this. I'm not even going to try because I know you can handle this way better than I can. I'm going to step back and I'm just going to live while you take care of it. Fred, that sounds like, that sounds like Christians that, that, that don't really have responsibility. Yes, you do. Faith is responsibility. Faith ain't no joke. To believe that God will take care of something takes faith. Well, I don't know how to have faith. All right. You don't know how to have faith? I'm going to show you how much faith you got. You ready? Everybody ready? You sure? Yes, sir. Did anybody check these chairs when you came in? Anybody? Anybody look at the chair? Examine the chair? Pick it up, make sure the screws were okay. Anybody? No. What did you do? You just sat down. Why? Because you expected that the chair would do what its purpose to do, which is what? Hold you up. Is that right? Guess what? You have faith in that chair. Because that chair's job is to make sure that you don't fall on the floor. If that, if, and now if I told y'all I loosened one of the chairs up, everybody here like, what chair, what chair did you loosen up? Am I in that chair? Am I going to fall? Check this out. If you come in here and you don't check a chair and it falls, guess what you're going to do the next time you come in here? Just chair all right? But you had faith that the chair would hold you up. Now picture that faith and God as the chair. How can it be so easy for me as a person because I believe that God is like my chair. I don't even have to check. I know he's got my best interest at his heart. Amen? The Bible says it's his goodness and kindness that leads us to repentance. When God's good to me, I repent. You know why? Because I realize that God is always watching over me, protecting me, looking out for me. He ain't ever caught off guard by my situations or my issues. He ain't never scared of what's going on in my life. God is sitting back going, I, am, I got you, Fred. You just going to do the work. I'm going to take care of everything else. The Bible says there's a spiritual warfare going on. You know, I love sometimes that God won't let me see any of that because I'll probably be freaking out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But God is like, don't worry about that. I got this. I got this. I'm taking care of everything. He's behind the scenes working it out. For we know all things work together for the good of them who love God and are called according to his purpose. God is working it out. He is not afraid of your situation. And let me tell you something. Resting is living. You can rest in the fact that God has everything under control. Amen? Amen? Amen. My last thought was this. New life brings new burdens. Amen. He says, for my, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Listen, people. Coming to Christ does not mean everything's going to be all right. Well, a preacher told me a long time ago that if I gave my Lord to, my life to Christ, he was going to take care of everything. He will. He'll watch over you. He's already been watching over you. I promise you, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. But it doesn't mean he's going to take away from you a burden. 
Well, I don't need any more burdens. No, he wants to take your burden and replace it with his burden. Why did Jesus die for us on the cross? Because the burden of sin and the punishment it brought, it brought was too much for us to bear. And you know what we do as people? We carry sin on our shoulders. We carry this weight, and we, and we want to call it whatever we want to call it. I'm just taking my time. I'm going to come to Christ when I'm ready. No, no, no. You, 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 don't, you never will be ready. You don't come to Christ when you're ready. You come to Christ when you're burdened. You come to Christ when you got too much on your shoulders. You come to Christ when you are born because you were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. The fact is you came out of the womb with a burden. Amen? Sin is a weight that we carry. And whether we admit it or not, we carry this weight. And we own it. And we go, man, I love, I, I, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm listen. Listen, Pastor Fred, Pastor Fred, listen. Your church seemed cool and everything. But man, when I get right, I'm going to be there. You ain't going to get right until you come. You ain't going to get right until you ask God. You ain't going to never get right until you give your life to God. Because you can't get right by yourself. Understand, the weight of sin is way too much for you to bear, to bear, to carry. And God is saying, cast your cares upon me. Give me your yoke. Give me that yoke. You know what a yoke was? It's what they put around an ox. And, an ox. And they would steer it. Sin is a yoke. It's around our neck. And the moment we try to do our own thing, sin says, no. Don't you do that. You come do what I tell you to do. And we try to live our life and think we're good when we don't have Christ. But Christ is saying, if you come to me, I'll replace that yoke on your neck. And I'll give you a burden like no other. I'll give you a burden that's light. See, I'll give you a burden for people. Come here, Paul, uh, uh, the, the apostles, the, the men, uh, the disciples. Come here. Let me talk to you for a minute. And listen, you've been fishing for a long time for your own stuff, but I'm going to make you a fisher of men. Listen, I'm going to change this burden on you. You are so worried about yourself. I'm going to make you not worry about yourself so much. And I'm going to place a burden on you that cares for other people. Because, see, if you let me worry about you, you don't have to worry about anything. Because I'm going to take care of you if you just take care of other people. Sin is a weight, and we can't carry that weight alone, and we can't carry that weight at all, but Christ comes to us and says, hey, I don't care where you are in life or what you've done in life or, or how many mistakes you got, or how much mess up you got. I don't even care about any of that. I just want to take the weight off of you. If you let me take the weight off your shoulder, I will give you a new life, and I'll give you a new burden. Fred, what if I'm not ready? Well, you ain't going to ever be ready. When will you be ready? When you decide that your weight is too much for you to handle. Amen? God, he comes, he brings new life, and he'll bring a new burden. You know, before I came to Christ, I was always concerned about me. Me, 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 me. Me, me, me. My, my, my. Me, me, my. That's what I, I was concerned about me. Like my, my thoughts when I woke up in the morning was about me. What about other people? I'm no plan to start a church to try and reach people and tell them that God has better for them than what they currently are experiencing in life. There was no plan for that. It was me. I wanted to be rich, I wanted to be a football player, I wanted to be whatever I could be that would bring me money so I could live my life the way I wanted to live it. That's a burden. Because you know what it did, on, it did for me? It threw me into this 
performance mentality. Well, I had to perform. The more, the better I did, the more people liked me. Oh, I'm good because I'm popular now. Oh, I got a little couple people like me. They know who I am. I'm not Danielle's little brother anymore at school. I'm Fred. People know me. Woo! But at the end of the day, none of that was gratifying. Because I was still not at peace. I still cried late at night because I was missing something. I would focus on my shortcomings, even though I was all about me and, and, and certain, you know, certain things were good and sometimes they were bad. But at the end of the night, when I lay down in my bed and I would think about what God was saying and what he was wanting, you know, I would just, I would just think about my life. At the end of the night, I wasn't happy. I was sad, depressed, not knowing anything. But when God showed up, when I gave my life to Christ, he changed all that. He put a hope in me. He put a burden on me to, to, to do something greater than me. And I'm telling you, whoever you are, wherever you are, God will do the same thing for you. Amen.